we'll just kind of go around and people can chat a little bit, tell a bit, little bit about yourselves, maybe, uh, you know, what's going on. But um, as we move, you know, maybe I've been more uh, optimistic than I should. I, I kept thinking that there would be a time when we could all meet together again as a as in person, and that we would we would start again our our idea labs, which is our members teaching other members uh, or our thought co-ops where we're talking about some big ideas as well as these networks. But I realize that's not um, the in person is not going to happen so for a while. So we are going to um, continue to try to um, put those programs back in place and uh, talk, uh, do it via Zoom. But I just, if you wouldn't mind too, if you've got some thoughts, if not, you know, maybe email us later. If there are some big uh, ideas or some things that you would like us to reach, you know, to, to either have our members teach and talk about or just kind of explore. I will say you've probably noticed uh, one of the things that uh, recently happened is uh, through the, in November, uh, our, our district area approved a downtown development authority. And so that's kind of a, a big deal for our city. And we're looking for some folks um, to talk to all of you about that. So that's an idea. And then you've probably also noticed it, as it ties to the election, there were, uh, um, you know, two or three, maybe more uh, laws that were the voters uh, approved that uh, do affect businesses moving forward. And so we'll try to uh, get some expertise to, to talk to you a little bit about that and maybe what that looks for you. But um, yeah, if you guys have any other ideas, please share that, uh, those ideas, and we will incorporate those into the programs moving forward. So with that, I'll just do what I typically do. I'll just kind of go around the blocks. And if you want to just introduce yourself to the new folks that are here um, and share anything you want. And if you and if you do have an idea, please share that and I'll write those down as we go along. So Thomas, if you don't mind, I'll start with you. You're the closest to in the blocks to my little square setup. So sure, no worries. Um, hi everyone. I'm Thomas. Hi, Thomas. <laughs> Uh, I am a photographer in Englewood. I just started doing uh, full-time photography. I was in the pet industry for the last seven and a half years. Uh, lost my job back in February and decided to go full-time into my side hustle of photography and really push that as a business. And then COVID jumped in. It was like, nice try, dude. Have fun building a business during a global pandemic. Um, luckily, it's actually been going well. So it's the one thing people can do outside and socially distance and they're happy to do it. And um, you know, people that were going to be going on luxurious vacations have decided to invest in art, which is awesome. Um, so I primarily concentrate on family lifestyle photography. Um, with that being said, my main uh, focus prior to family was doing uh, headshots. So if, if you know anyone that needs really good quality headshots, let me know, especially as chamber members. If you guys want some always good special deals for you guys. <laughs> so just let me know, but that's kind of me in a nutshell. Great. And anything on the forefront that you're wondering about or, or thinking about? I mean, I know I'm just throwing this at us right now, but not, maybe not at this time. Not yet. Um, you know, touching base, actually, I, I'm, I'm excited to see um, the, the grant that came through for the home-based businesses. That was very exciting. I actually need to send in my application for that. I totally forgot. Things got busy, thankfully, but <laughs> I need to do that. Um, so I'm, I'm just happy to see that uh, Englewood is taking that into consideration as, you know, an important step since especially so many of us may not have been home-based businesses, but in the future might be. Um, I think it's an important step to really recognize that this is a, a legitimate business. We all pay taxes the same way. We're all you know, still business owners, even though we don't have a storefront or studio space or whatever it might be. So I'm excited to see that. Um, yeah, that's kind of it off the top of my head now. I think Inglewood's done a great job as far as, you know, managing pandemic life and trying to make things accessible and fun for people. So I'm just glad to see that we're living in a, in a city that's careful and cautious, but also making sure people have a life to live still and are not so locked down that safe businesses can still operate, if that makes sense. So I'm just happy to have that going on. Great. 
Great. Well, thank you so much. And sure. um, just for the rest of you that uh, know, just, you know, that's, I think, one of the benefits of, of us having these conversations. It was folks like Angela and Thomas and others that really talked to the, um, was talking to the uh, chamber about, you know, can we get some representation from home-based businesses? And we really, um, we went to bat for you and talked to Darren and, and the city manager, Sean, and and uh, they, uh, I think we framed it in a way that made sense and they went great. Let's try to move that forward and then all the details for that. So thank you very much. Um, Angela, I know you got to get going. So do you want to go next? It's like, I love unmuting. It feels so powerful. Um, so actually to kind of go off of what Thomas just said, uh, Nancy and I run a business called Tiny Studio, LLC. Uh, design, marketing, um, print, media, web. And we did receive one of those grants. It was the easiest grant I've ever had to write in my life. It was quick, it was short, it was, what did you earn last year at this time? And we literally were able to prove we dropped 50% of our income. And then the questions were, what did you lose? And how would you use the money? And literally both of us had software renewals and we use Adobe and that's about a $600 investment. So literally $1,200, went right to our ability to have software access. So, and then the other money we actually built in this COVID time to use for training, lynda.com, Udemy. And then we discovered, because we're really crafty, that through your library license, your library card, you can access online education via mm. Udemy. It's exactly like lynda.com. So those of you, my biggest tips, is for re-education, continuing education, software upgrade, go through your library card and you can't do Linda. They decided Linda was now a second party person and they were compromising privacy. So libraries ditched their relationship. So my best tip for today is use Udemy. It's exactly like lynda.com. For those of us in the creative world, we live and breathe those type of quick tutorials. So that's my chamber tip for the day. Hey, Angela, will you spell that Udemy? What is that? Hi. Yeah, it's like you... U-D-E-M-Y. And if you're in your library, you go to research and then okay. you go to the alphabet and you hit the letter U and it pops up. Okay, got it. Yeah, that is like my best tip for the day. That will save you money. So now we have money to pay for postage to send out public promotional pieces that we wanted to send out to say, how have we redefined ourselves? So we have redefined ourselves. We've looked at niches. Now our kind of opportunities are helping people do slides because slides are what people are using. They used to be in boardroom, but now because they are so much more prominent, we're talking to people about best design, best use, best promotion. Because I come from film and television, I'm able to tell people, oh, light your Zoom this way, simplify your background. Your sonore, you're gonna iron the snot out of that backdrop of yours <laughs> because it needs to be perfect. Because all these things, affect how people read. So the same things that you would do if you were designing a commercial, you're going to tell people about Zoom. So we're kind of redefining. And the other way we've redefined ourselves, believe it or not, is because people are in their homes more and more and more. And I have been on film sets dealing with these things is I'm kind of calling it dust free renovation where I come in and I say, okay, how do you want to use this space? How is it working? How is it not working? There's no construction. There's no extra budget. It's just my time. I come in and I do a few David Carradine things and help people make their space a little bit more comfortable. Things that didn't bother them when they were out of the house more often, I'm able to now kind of say, oh, I have this eye, I have these solutions I've been using for film and television, but I can also use them personally. And then Nancy has been really working on educating herself on um, on-demand publishing, one of, you know, and using all these other tools. So we are definitely taking that grant money and running with it the way we said we would. So I really encourage any home-based business who does in fact have an LLC, go for that grant. It's the easiest grant. And the city is so excited because they don't have all of us registered. So they're not sure how many of us are registered. And then also those of us that don't know what the heck a sales and use tax is because we don't have brick and mortar, Heather Driscoll at the city is amazing. She will, she will hold your hand. You tell her you're a creative and numbers scare you. <laughs> she gets it. She totally does not insult us. She says the last thing she wants to do is paint her room. But so literally, I would, I'm would. i really grateful that the city and the chamber have gone through. And I'm not just saying that as a smarmy, you know, kiss, um, whatever. I just really want to say that the people in the city have been great with somebody like me who's like, well, look, I want to be legit. 
but we're a service, we're not an object seller. Um, so that's my two cents right now. And then I, I am gonna apologize if I can't listen to everybody because I do have to sneak out and go to ACC. So thank you, David. Thank you. And you gave me a couple of ideas for maybe some idea labs that we might swing back on you. Oh, I think you guys should do one for Zoom best yeah. practices. Um, I mean, I know right now, like the New York Times is doing a lot of best practices for Zoom Thanksgiving, but but professional Zoom, I would think would be a great one. And you've got a lot of production people on your on your group and you've got a photographer right there. He can give you a few three point lighting tips that you don't have to buy. And I think you really should talk about slide presentation. Um, and when you do a Zoom presentation, don't start with a slide because that disconnects people. Start with your face, then go to your slide. Um, like those types of tips, I think you could easily yeah. incorporate. Great. Professional photograph when... for your profile photos. Go a long way. Yeah, totally. It, and a little rim light. It doesn't have to be, look, I have a little rim light right here and it kind of pops me off my background. <laughs> Great, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I, you know what I, I, I think we're realizing more and more is how many uh, entrepreneurs in the home base, you know, we have in this community. And so uh, we've been talking a little bit uh, about kind of a, a startup entrepreneurial track of some sort that will get people. I just had someone the other day ask me, uh, they said, you know, my business is really taking off in my house. And uh, Dave, how do I, how do we go from, I'm thinking about actually, I'd like to get into a space uh, to get out of my house and, and how does that happen? What does that look like? Um, and so there's some, I think there's some opportunity to teach folks that as well. That'd be huge. Yeah. Personally speaking, you know, I've looked at studio space, I'm building a studio in my home, but you know, eventually I'm going to hit max capacity, <laughs> capacity, if we ever have capacity at some point, but you know, there's, there's definitely room to expand, so. Okay, great. Well, thanks. Well, well, we'll work on that, get some experts in there to talk to all, everybody about that. Darren, I think you have to take off as well. So do you wanna, I know you're going to, I believe you're going to the back happy, to ACC. Happy, happy to, David, thank you. Um, and Angela, thank you for those comments. And it was a great segue on the small business grant, the home-based business grant. So it, they, the chamber's leadership in, in pointing out the importance of supporting home-based businesses uh, really opened the door for this program. And uh, glad that you had a good experience going through that, Angela. And then I'm glad that uh, others are going to make the effort and apply for this grant. It's really easy. Uh, and licensing is the only, if you will, hurdle. And that's meant to be a, a pretty straightforward process. And Heather's great to work with. Heather's in our licensing department. Um, we've been working very uh, heavily on trying to get some COVID dollars, some CARES Act dollars to work within the city. We've got almost $700,000 uh, placed in businesses' hands doing about 280, 290 grants, uh, which is a, a lot for us. Uh, our normal grant for a, 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 a year is eight to 10 grants that we normally do in your average given year. So going up to 700 grants has been uh, a workload for all the team and uh, we've, we've all pulled together to get that accomplished. Um, the biggie on the grants right now is restaurants looking for uh, patio heaters um, and pa uh, temporary patio space and shelters for those patios. So we're working with a number of businesses to do three or four season patios with some heaters and there's grant funds available to accomplish that. Uh, we also have grant funds available to help um, uh, businesses on a startup basis and we are seeing um, some solid activity of businesses moving to town. Uh, David, I introduced a, a lady to you, uh, or dropped your, your name and contact information to a lady that just moved from Tabernash with a uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, collectibles type of business up and down. She has a property down on Broadway now. So from Tabernash to Inglewood, that's kind of fun to see her, her transition. And she's got a very solid so social media presence. So she'll be a nice addition to town. Despite the pandemic, still the fundamentals are apply and businesses are, are still... Um, looking at available space on Broadway and looking at opportunities to, to buy. Uh, a longtime Inglewood business is now really wanting to buy a property and, and having a hard time. The market's tightening up. So um, we, we, we have a very solid little real estate market, commercial real estate market in Inglewood, and uh, that's continuing through the pandemic. Although things have changed quite a bit, we're doing business in a different manner, being more responsive in different ways. Uh, we usually do face-to-face -face stuff, much like the chamber, and 
in partnership with uh, Manufacturer's Edge. October uh, is Manufacturer's Month, and we used to do a reception at a manufacturing event. And the first uh, one of one of those had we had over 100 100 people attend that. So uh, moving to a Zoom format, um, moving to a virtual and a distance format. Uh, is, is a change for all of us. So it's great to see everybody today. And uh, I'm gonna put my contact information in the chat. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to call or email. Um, I'm a click or a phone call away and I'm happy to be a resource for you. Thank you. Great, thanks Darren. One of the things Darren had just mentioned as well as I'll, I'll share with you guys that has been new for the chamber and been kind of a new trend uh, for us is that uh, through this pandemic, we've um, had five uh, new businesses join the chamber that are not even in our state. So we recently got a, there was a, a gentleman called, he's a, a strategic business consultant, uh, Zen Business, you might see it on the, on the website. Uh, they are based in Austin, but they wanted to do uh, business in Denver and uh, saw our site, uh, um, Shout out to Lindsay for pushing all of our stuff out there and, and uh, letting people know about us. So that's kind of an interesting new um, process as well of people that are looking at Inglewood or looking at Denver and, and joining up to connect with more people in our area. So I thought that's a, you don't need a, I mean, I think what this is teaching all of us and to uh, all of your comments at the beginning is you maybe don't need a uh, brick and mortar right on the street there anymore other than getting it out of your home uh, to do business elsewhere because we can all kind of help other, you know, other people from other spaces. So great. Thank you, Darren and Angela. If you guys got to take off, we understand. Uh, great to do. Um, Hi, Sean, Angela. I think, oh, <laughs> five more minutes. Sean, you were uh, next on my block list here. Do you want to share a little bit? Yeah, sure. Um, so, hey guys, I'm Sean. I'm a freelance audio engineer here in Inglewood. Um, I just like, I think Thomas was saying, I started um, being full-time when the pandemic hit. Uh, I was actually taking classes at ACC when the, the pandemic hit. And um, yeah, I'm just looking to, to network with, with people and um, to, you know, find resources, I guess. So um, yeah, any, any, Grant resources, um, any links would would be really helpful to me. Um, also, yeah, I mean, one thing I've been doing a lot is is podcast editing, actually, because a lot of people have been starting podcasts um, because they're home more. And um, I also help uh, small business uh, small business owners start podcasts if they don't know how to, you know, get started with gear recommendations and all that stuff. Great. Lindsay, would you be able to throw on the, the chat there the, the link to the grants, the small yeah. business grants for Sean? So Thank you. look for that in the chat there. Yeah, um, absolutely. It is pretty easy. All right, see you, Angela. So, Sonora, hey, you're... Sonora, okay, you're I want to tell Sean something. Can I tell Sean oh, something really oh, fast? Oh, sure, yes. Yeah. Okay, so anybody, especially, I mentioned this to Thomas in the private, but there might be other people who are creatives. There's a closed Facebook group called Find, Film in Denver, F period, I period, N period, D period. Okay. Find. And they are really specifically for people in media production. Could be oh, cool. anything you're talking about. So introduce yourselves to them. They're always posting, looking for an audio engineer, looking for a photographer, looking for headshots. Nice. Thank you. The other thing for you to know, like, um, Arapahoe County Library just put out a request for proposal for audio engineer. The, uh, sorry, the, the Inglewood Library? Yeah, no, the Arapahoe County. Arapahoe, Arapahoe County. Library oh, just cool. put out an RFP. My big tip for all of you home-based businesses right now, this is my next tip. If you haven't heard of bidnet.com, B-I-D-N-E-T.com. Bidnet. Um, Bidnet. You may not want to clean the sewer system out of the Inglewood Public Schools, but you might see a thing that says marketing strategy for Golden, City of Golden. Um, audio engineer needed for Darren Hollingsworth, chat, whatever. So the, some of the requests are really more civic engineering, but there's enough variety in there that a lot of us within this home-based place, there are some for there. And I know that uh, Darren Hollingsworth in conjunction with somebody else does a lot of uh, chats for how to put forward RFPs for these type of bids. Um, so that's another connection 
that David can talk about, but I do have to run and I'm so sorry to everybody that I have to skip out on it feels really rude. Um, All right. Thanks for joining us. You bet. All right, Sonora, you are in the next group there. Hello, everybody. My name is Sonora LeSage, and I am a realtor with HomeSmart. Um, not only that, but I have a couple of community groups. I have Mothers of Inglewood and Women of Eagle, Inglewood. Um, just some community groups. We're trying to get creative about different things that we can do around COVID. Um, this is going to be a great connection because I need headshots. <laughs> I'm wanting to learn how to do podcasts. So this is going to be great connections for everybody, um, for, for me at least. Um, so yeah, I've got a lot of things that I've, ideas that I'm trying to get out there um, that we can't do publicly, especially through the holidays. I'm just really trying to do my part to encourage people to stay home and do what we can from home as much of a social person as I am, but still we got to do what we got to do. So it's great to make all these introductions. Yeah. Oh, Thank and you. a couple other things. So I'm also um, a block captain. Um, so I don't know if you guys are know about that, but we have like this block captain program here in Inglewood. And it's just encouraging camaraderie with your neighbors. Um, and it's amazing. Um, let's see, who is it? Um, Madeline. Madeline, thank you. Yep, Madeline heads that and she's amazing. We had a meeting the other day and there's just a ton of resources and stuff. And so how it behooves me and how it could behoove you is um, like I asked her about doing mailers. Well, I can do information about our neighborhood, but then I can also put my, my information on there too. So there's Great. a lot of more resources too. And I also went to a few of those community development things and that was really interesting in, to go to and be involved in. Yeah. Yeah. Very Is much. that, was that around the unified development code? Is that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, yeah, if you, the, the latest, I think if you guys haven't seen that and we've been trying to push it out on our social media, as well, uh, is they are asking, um, you know, the, the city's really looking to our housing situation mm -hmm. and what, how we uh, might uh, provide, if people were interested, uh, tiny homes or smaller homes mm -hmm. or what that begins to look like. Mm -hmm. uh, Brad Powers from the city always says, you know, Inglewood is completely developed. Yeah. So everything that we do is either mm -hmm tearing down a, a something that was already there and redeveloping it or, or looking at, at things in a different, the built environment in a different way. So mm -hmm. um, that's what they're really doing right now is trying to get feedback. So if you haven't shared your feedback and you have some strong opinions that way about our built environment, mm -hmm. please help them out. Mm -hmm. I know uh, walkability and bikeability has brought up, been brought up um, at multiple times with this as well as um, Affordability the, has been has been the biggest the one, and issue. of course, being in my business, I want to keep it affordable. I want people to be able to stay here, buy here. You know, I'm all about the affordability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, great. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Thank great. you, David. And um, Melissa, are you with ABC? Yes, okay, she is. and it's. I want to give her a shout out because you're like a, I don't know. It's been about a year ago. Okay, She's okay. the one that actually planted the seed of the Greater Inglewood Chamber of Commerce to me. So, oh, thank you so Melissa. much, Melissa. Yeah, great. You're welcome. I um. Do you find uh business uh new locations for businesses? I'm sorry. Do I um find new locations for businesses? No, not necessarily. I make. I probably could um find some resources, but I'm more residential. Okay. Okay. You guys looking for Thank a new you. spot? Yeah, are you guys looking for um, a new spot? No, we aren't, but, um, and I can't think of her name off the top of my head, but um, there's an Inglewood business that is looking okay. for to relocate. She's just yeah. outgrown her space. Yeah, okay. And I'll, I wasn't sure who to I'll go to. I'll, I'll ask around. I'll ask around and see uh, who does commercial and uh, get you a contact. Thank you. Yeah. I yeah. appreciate well, it. So, yeah. yeah you're so Nora, if you if you find if you find some folks you like as well, I mean, we have some on our membership we can uh, uh, um, direct you to as well. But you know, I think that would be we're getting more and more of those questions. Yeah. So how do how do we? So that might be a nice uh, dialogue with members that are are looking in that way. And so maybe I let's agree. work together and see if totally. we can't put a panel together or something that would. Yeah, be Yeah, I to agree. Everybody. 
And it's okay. it's interesting because over the last few months, I've had getting these little seeds planted about going into commercial. I just don't know how I feel about it because I really love sure. residential, but I'm like, I don't know. I'm getting all these things. So we'll see. It'd be sure. good for me to sit on that panel and listen to what they have to say. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. All sure. right. Well, thanks, everybody. Nice Thank to meet you, you all. Hey, can That's I interrupt right? for two seconds, David? Sorry. Oh, sure. Yep. Hey, Sonora, would you mind putting some of your information in the chat for people? I don't think uh, mm -hmm. people know about the groups that you're part of. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, sharing a little bit more of that information might be great. Yep. Yep. I will be happy to do that. Thank great. you. Thank mm -hmm. you. So next on my block is, am I saying it right, Metra? Mitra. Yep. Mitra, my sorry, I apologize. Okay, I've heard way worse, so. You're good. <laughs> okay. um, I'm Mitra. I work with Networth Realty in Denver. Um, I, we specialize in distressed properties, and um, my job is to help match investors with fix and flip or fix and hold projects, kind of all over the Denver and Northern Colorado area. We have an office um, in Loveland as well that we have access to those properties, and then a little bit of. Colorado Springs, but that's like, you know, here and there. Um, I'm pretty new. Uh, this is the end of my eighth week. Tomorrow will be officially two months. So I'm like Woo. really new. Um, so I don't have a lot of business ventures to offer up to you. Um, I have a cat, obviously, as you yeah. saw. She likes my attention constantly. Um, and yeah, well, that, that's, my, that's my thing. It's your welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah. Um, Melissa, you're next on the group there. Hi, I'm Melissa with ABNC. Um, so what we do is apparel, uh, promotional products, printing, anything that a small business might need, um, including home businesses. Um, the question is, how are you staying up with your customers? Um, is it mailers? Is it emails? Uh, you know, here's the thing. I think mailers have been kind of a lost art to some degree uh, because now everything is through email and we just hit delete, delete, delete. <laughs> I mean, mailers, you still have to hold, look at, and then if you want to chuck, you can chuck. <laughs> so, but um, I, I think we're seeing more and more people join a little bit more um Postcards, we're seeing a little bit more, a lot of apparel right now, um, for whatever the reason, I'm doing a ton of apparel, but, you know, I'm here to help you, take care of you, and um, be your local one-stop shop. Great, thank you. And Melissa did these for us, these masks that have our our logo on it, so thank you so much, Melissa, for doing that. So, any of that COVID-related PP e that you need they can help you with as well so and thank you for the the little gift that you dropped by the bank for us so we appreciate oh good it. you got it we did yeah it um i literally threw it through the teller yeah <laughs> that's how we got and it back. Lindsay, there's one for you too <laughs> yeah yes, Great. uh i actually got it yesterday thank you melissa oh, are you serious? <laughs> i did not know that that your um space was closed and, yeah. and she's like, well, if you can shove it in there, I can take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how we've been getting most of our mail is through the, through the slot. <laughs> they, they do let us, they do let us in, you know, when we, but there's some in protocols and we're trying to follow totally. the, the guidelines of, of staying uh, at home as much as we can. So trying to do our part as well. So, but thank you so much. Yeah. So again, yeah. Melissa can, if you need anything printed or made up in, in uh, promotional items, um, we, this is your person to take care of that. So thank you. Um, Cindy, you're next on my group. If you want to share a little bit. Hi, my name is Cindy Hamilton and I own Hamilton Recruiting and Consulting. And, um, I help small businesses with their staffing. So as you guys are talking about finding space, you know, when you step into that world where you maybe want are wanting space, a physical space, you might need some staff to help you with that. And um, really, a lot of people don't know how to hire. And, you know, there's a lot of laws and there's a lot of things about that. So I can work with small businesses on that, helping them write their job descriptions, doing the pre-interviews, all of that kind of stuff. And, 
you know, I was listening to Darren and um, so where the Whiskey Biscuit is this summer, they had outdoor um, se seating and um, there was music out there and I thought that that was great. And I don't eat inside restaurants, but I will eat outside. And I've been wondering what they're gonna be doing for the restaurants as it gets colder. So that was exciting to hear that space heaters are part of that grant because I'm so impressed at the way, especially these restaurants have repositioned themselves on a dime to create outdoor space and to keep their businesses alive. Um, so I was happy to hear that the city of Inglewood is providing the grants for those kind of things so we can continue to eat outside and, and you know, have those, those good times. So, you know, if you need any help with staffing, if you have any questions about that, if you have any questions about compensation, what you should pay people, um, or you just want to talk about that area, just give me a call, you know, we have lots of conversations, um, you know, that certainly wouldn't cost you anything, but yeah, walking into the world of hiring and staffing is a kind of a whole different thing. And it might go hand in hand with, as you're creating a physical space that you need somebody to help you, you know, work some hours and things like that. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited. And I really was excited to hear that Englewood is doing so much for the small business owners. Yeah. Thanks, Cindy. And has your, uh, world or is it about to change a little bit with uh, some of the new uh, laws that were passed here in, in uh, you know, the state? I was just on an employment law seminar yesterday um, and some of the new laws passed. Colorado passed some employee friendly laws. The, we've got some leave act. We've got some pay if you're on sick. And then, you know, there's some talk about, uh, uh, you know, the executive orders that might be undone. And there's some talk that, you know, with Biden being president, and I know we're still, you know, we're still kind of, you know, if Biden is really president, but you know, that he's gonna right away and do some immigration orders so that we can get some more foreign workers into the country. Um, you know, some of the H-1B visas, and he's going to open up some of the borders and he, um, they were saying that since the current president did so much via executive order, it's easy to undo. And I, I'm not trying to get into politics, but this does affect the world of employment. You know, when you stop your H-1B visas, does that stop some of the scientists and software engineers and the people from some other countries from coming in and having jobs and performing some of those tasks? And when I was on contract at Jeppesen, which is a, a very software company, you know, we have a lot of talent that comes from other uh, other countries. So it's an interesting time. Colorado is definitely very pro-employee. Um, even the Colorado Department of Labor and Unemployment, the way they reposition themselves to get the federal money in to, now they also have, I don't know, David, if they're calling it a grant, but they found the extra money to give to people, a stimulus that they were giving to people. So we're in for some exciting changes. Yes, yes, there's yeah. some, you know. Um, I know there were some FMLA changes as well. FMLA, those, yeah, so. that's the leave. And then there's some pair, making sure that um, everybody's paid the same or something like that. Okay. Um, I, I don't have really all the details on that. And then we're going to okay. start, employers are going to start paying. And small business owners, I think I heard yesterday, it's under 10. So if you only are one or two, you don't have to necessarily be concerned about this. They're going to start taking 0.9% of wages and putting it into a fund so people have sick leave. Right. So, you know, and there's two sides to that. And this isn't the form and we have a lot of people to get through. But the discussion about that, the impact maybe to a small business owners that that might have that that's another expense for them. But it's going to help people have some kind of money while they're out on, you know, a qualified leave. So sure. it's an exciting time and it might be an exciting panel to have sometime, David, you okay. know, as we transition into the first of the year sure. and the administration sure. is more settled. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, uh, that's why I asked. I thought that that might be something that, uh, um, how it may or may not affect some of our small businesses and how it's going to ex expect some of our uh, businesses over, uh, 100 plus or whatever. So we, we'll, yeah. we'll uh, reach out to you and, and talk about that a little bit as well. 
Uh, Courtney, you're next on my group there. I'm unmuting. There you Hi, go. Everyone. Great. Um, I'm Courtney Cotton. I'm new to the chamber. Can you hear me? Can. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, I I need Sean to help me with my <laughs> my audio visual. Um, so I am an artist, and we have some artist studio spaces on um, 3940 South Broadway. We don't have a name yet. Um, the owner wants to put in a tasting room restaurant in that building. However, upstairs there's offices that aren't being utilized. So they envision artist studios or small business spaces. Uh, I sent Melissa a private message to see how much space her friend needed. Currently, we have two artists in there, myself and another painter. Um, as well as a restaurant on the south side of the building, there's another great space that we're looking at as an art gallery which is almost up and running. So I do need to talk to the city to find out. I don't know if I wanna start a business or just have it as a perk for the artists upstairs. Mm -hmm. um, nevertheless, it's, a, it's been a slow process with COVID. Uh, the owners are nervous about opening a rest, who, restaurant during this time, but um, we're going for it with the art the artist spaces and the small gallery space. And we're actually in a safe way gonna have an open studios, the 21st and 22nd. And uh, David is on my mailing list. So I'm gonna send him an invitation. We're gonna do um, a sign up genius type software to make sure there are only so many people in the building. I have a volunteer that works at a hospital. So we're gonna have the thermometer, uh, hand sanitizer, just use safe practices. Great. Um, so I'd love to invite everyone to that. If you're interested, you can put your email or give me permission because the email mailing softwares are really picky about you just randomly adding people to your list. Um, if the restaurant doesn't work out, um, I'm hopeful we get the entire building for art. And I'd like to foresee something where we help youth or seniors or use that great space to, uh, for, the, for community purposes. Uh, yeah. So it's evolving. And um, I've been very happy with what I've learned from the Inglewood Chamber and I'm happy I joined it, thank you. And meeting different people and having different resources. I keep a running list of, of people I meet at these coffees. Um, unfortunately, we did have some vandalism I think Tuesday, I, I, the police told me that it's been all, uh, there've been more instances where we had these wheat pastes on our building um, that say hope. There's a local street artist that does wheat pastes. And that's basically instead of uh, street art where you use spray paint, you use uh, a piece of paper that you glue to the building. And there are two hearts and they, they one said hope and one used to say hope, and then she switched it to, to vote. So there weren't, they weren't partisan or anything type of art, but someone took a brown paper bag and glued it over the letters and then threw red paint on it. So that was a little annoying, but um, the police were great. And, and we just felt we needed to um, report it. And they sure. said they've had that happen through, throughout Inglewood a little bit uh, at the beginning of the week this week. So I just thought I'd share that we're resilient, not a big sure. deal, you know, sure. but yeah, so that's what I do. And, um, you know, I'm in an evolution stage of the business, sure. but I'm a painter. So great. That's awesome. That's to know. I've actually been, I, every time I drive by that building, every time I'm like, I want to own that building. I, want <laughs> to buy that building. I love that building. Uh, yeah. So it's actually good to know what's going on there too, because I keep looking at the space downstairs. I'm like, God, I wonder what they're doing with it, because that'd be an awesome studio space. <laughs> well, keep, keep, yeah, keep me on your radar, and um, yeah, keep me on your radar. We're open and for collaborations or whatever. I am going to have a little art show uh, set up with various artists. So. Uh, Oh, that's a, I think that might be somewhere else, Courtney. Oh, okay. Please feel, so feel any, free to, yep, keep talking. Yeah. 
So anyway, um, yeah, so we're, I'm open for collaborations, ideas. It, it was hard for me to see the building sit empty. So my intern this summer and I painted the gallery and the gallery's done. I'm going to have some art set up. So during our studio sales, just to make sure there's not crowds and we're six feet apart, people can peruse different artists and um, yeah, Great. come by. It's 11 to five. I'll send, I mean, I could if put you, the information on this. Yeah. Chat. If you want to, if you want to do that as well, uh, I'm, and I'm sure I'm stepping on, on Lindsay's uh, talk, but I'm just, since you brought it up right now, you know, that that's one of the things that we can do as a chamber as well is take our mailing list of, of, you know, 700 folks and, and send out information on what you guys are doing. So Courtney, if you send uh, Lindsay or myself the invitation, we can then add it to our uh, email list Perfect. and pump it out that way. And I'll so, do it that way. Um, okay. And we get about a 40% uh, percent open rate. Um, as Melissa said, there's some people that just delete emails, but that's not right. But at a 40% open rate, we feel that's pretty good. Um, a lot of people are seeing what we do. So that's one other, other way we can help as well as uh, if you have uh, something on social media, we can always share that to our, our growing group on social media as well. Oh, so. thank you. Those are two thank ways you. we can help as well. Um, so All right. Well, thank you thank so much. You and so let us, much. And nice let us know if, if we can do anything as a chamber to help you. I mean, I, I live over by your space there as well. And I did see that uh, vandalism and that was really unfortunate, but uh, sounds like you've got it handled with the police. But again, if there's anything we can do to help with uh, as things move along, please let us know. Yeah. I mean, we may have caused it. There were some people sleeping on the roof. Uh, you can, our, our, uh, fire escape goes up to a really easily accessible garage roof and the police were doing some extra patrolling and um, just because I work really late at night and sometimes it's scary having someone on the, that close sure. and um, I don't know if it was a reaction to that or whatever but it's Great. okay all right Great. it was nice to meet everyone and yeah. have a nice Great. weekend Great to see you <laughs> Carol do you want to say a couple things Sure. Good morning, everybody. My name's Carol. My business is The Clapping Oak. I, uh, it's all about communication services, consulting, and training, uh, which means I'm a content writer. Uh, mostly that is blog posts, but some other things. I have uh, like ghost blogging for people. Uh, they, uh, I have a new project that I'm excited about. Um, I think I'm going to really enjoy it. And that is, um, the client is an older gentleman who is an entrepreneur in a different state, actually. So this kind of relates to what you said, David, about connecting with people wherever, right? But um, he has stories to tell. And he wants to capture them for his family and for the business community where he lives. And so yesterday we started meeting by Zoom and he tells me stories and I recorded it and, but he wants it in written form. So I have a question. Uh, I welcome suggestions for how to convert that into a transcript. I did some research online yesterday looking at different options and didn't come up with anything that after the fact was gonna work very well. Um, so, because I don't want to record all my Zoom meetings, right? I just want to get the part where he's telling me stories. Um, so, yeah, I welcome suggestions for that. But it's just really interesting to me. And if I can help somebody like that to leave his legacy, um, if you know of anybody else, uh, you know, this, we're living in a time where, I mean, there's always been age differences, and part of my training is in my, um, the training I provide is in cross-generational communication. And in the time of COVID, you know, it's, there's, there's even more of this, like um, the needs of younger generations, the needs of older generations to be safe and carry out life. So how can we honor both and connect? And, um, so I, I thought as I was interviewing him yesterday, uh, something like that would help an older person to not feel as isolated, to have these, these stories, have somebody listening to them and, and 
then translating the stories into something that others can not only enjoy, but benefit from. Uh, and then the training, the form that takes is live event um, video uh, workshops for organizations where if we can come in and we don't have one scheduled for individuals to sign up for at this time, probably won't do that again until after the first of the year. But it's a it's a something that a team, you know, if, if there's a business that has a training, uh, you know, their HR provides training for their staff. Um, there are soft skills that we can help each other with and tech skills that we can help each other with as older and younger people in the workforce. And uh, diversity, when, when we have diversity in the workforce, everyone wins, including the bottom line. And diverse and age is one iteration of diversity. The communication principles work with in other settings as well. Um, so that's, that's what I'm about these days. Great, thank you so much. And for those that don't know, Carol is also the president of our chamber, so. Thank you, Carol. Can I say something real quick? Sure. Yeah. Um, so, Carol, one of the things that I'm wanting to do with my um, Mothers of Inglewood is do, like, interviews with mothers around it, like, start with my mom and, you know, other. So, like, I, I find it so exciting that you have the kind of the same same thought. And what a wonderful thing to have that recorded. Um, I'm having the same kind of question around transcribing because I want to put part of it in the mailer and then lead people to like the YouTube or the actual podcast. So if you figure something out, let me know. If I figure something out, I'll let you know. Great. Nora, let me know if you want to do images as part of that. I'd be interested in collaborating and doing some cool headshots or portraits of that. Absolutely. I want, there's a few of okay. you guys I want to collaborate. Thomas, I'm looking at you. Sean, I'm looking at you. Carol, like, yeah, get, we'll, we'll get to know each other. <laughs> Great. Great. Thanks, guys. And, and uh, I think, last of all, we've got Katie. Katie, do you know Courtney? You guys are almost neighbors. Uh, no, I don't. So I'll just, you know, uh, Katie, Courtney, Katie uh, owns uh, the Peace Store on the corner of Broadway and uh, Quincy. And, and then, you know, Courtney's down. I think most of us have called that the Hope Building for a long time. But I know. Uh, it may not last that may not be the name you guys land on but that's kind of so you're only a couple blocks away but I just thought I'd do that let you guys know your neighbors but I'm sorry Katie to take your time <laughs> go ahead no you're fine thank you very much um I'm just super excited to be here and I'm just keeping the doors open and trying to figure out new things every day as to how to get people in the door safely but also I'm trying to figure out like SEO and website stuff, which is not in my normal wheelhouse. So just trying to uh, kind of just figure things out as they go. And I'm super happy to be a part of this wonderful community. And it's just so welcoming and I love it. Great. Thank you, Katie. So you're, Can I you're ask I, a quick question, Katie. Yeah. I just wanted to, I was curious about how, um, Katie's been having um, bands come and play. And I wanted to know how that's been working out, like with your outdoor space and attendance. You know, it's been it's been really cool. So I had a band for the grand opening. Um, and then that same band was super excited about being there because they can't play anywhere safely. And I've got a great outdoor space that everyone can be separate and still be able to listen to music and have some kind of community feeling. So they asked to come back. And then when they were there the second time, someone else asked if they could come there and be a part of it. So I, I've kind of set up some chairs distanced outside and a canopy that they can be under to play. It has brought like the followers from the people that are playing, the band people are there. And it's brought a little bit of business inside, but not a whole lot, but that's okay. It's just, I think it's getting me noticed and kind of opening up that feeling for people that just want to come. I mean, I've had several people that are part of the neighborhood 
in different aspects that are kind of a bit more of wanderers that have come and just hung out and you know it's it's just neighbors that have driven past and said oh this is wonderful and they've stopped and just kind of checked it out so I think it's it's a good feeling that we all have been missing and hopefully that'll even if it just does that and gives everyone a sense of community that is wonderful but if it brings people inside that is also an extra bonus. Okay. Hey, Katie, I also book and promote shows, so feel free to hit me up if you need help with that. Awesome. Thanks. Katie, have you done any Facebook marketing, like actual ads, courses, or anything like that? You know, I've done a couple of Facebook ads, and I, I'm i probably not doing them in the correct manner. I have not gotten the best responses from the Facebook ads that I've, that I've placed, so I'm not entirely sure about that. I have a website that does not honestly get much traffic, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, I kind of built it myself and I'm not a web person. So I did a pretty good job in the way that I know how, but I, it's lacking, very much lacking. So, and um, especially in these days, what's that? Well, I was just going to, I'm sorry to you. I was just going to ask Thomas, do you have some experience doing that? Facebook ads? Uh, I do personally, obviously my business is a little bit different, but, um, I could certainly offer some help or at least recommend the course that I took, which to be completely clear is designed for photographers for, you know, by photographers for photographers. However, the, uh, methods used in the course, um, they kept me afloat. I mean, it, it went from, I've, I've spent $1,500 on Facebook ads on so I took this course and then I spent a hundred dollars and got 68 well-qualified leads that turned into 24 shoots that turned into $7,400 worth of income. Like it, it's night and day when you know how to use the ads correctly, that they actually work. Um, I would imagine in your situation, since you have a brick and mortar store and you're selling physical product, the same process uh, applies to your ads as well, which is you put out some sort of, of, um, lead magnet is what they call, whether it's, you know, hey, 50% off your first item or whatever it is, right? Some lead magnet that brings people in to click on your ad, then they can follow through and, and come see you. Um, just with local targeting to Englewood would probably do quite well for you. Um, anyway, reach out if you would want information on that course or just a flat recommendation is, is look for a course. You will spend tons of money on Facebook until you know exactly how to target ads correctly and then it'll help. So don't waste a ton of money. <laughs> Get a course. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fantastic. I would love to talk to you more about that. Sure. Shoot me an email. And, and maybe, you know, that sounds like another opportunity for us and our members. If we've got enough people wondering about that, we can, uh, Lindsay and I will do some research as well, or Thomas, if you want to shoot us who you used or whatever, we'll get maybe some members. I know we have some uh, members in that area that could maybe give us a little yeah, idea of how that might work. Local members would be amazing, obviously, um, especially for more brick and mortar type stores, because it is a bit different than what I do. I sell services plus images, et cetera, et cetera. But um, the people I used was the art of six figures.com. It's a number six, not the word six. Easton Reynolds. Um, like I said, it's it's for photographers, but the quality of information there is phenomenal. I'm sure there are other courses that way too, but um, he does a lot of guest speaking stuff too. So I mean, he might be interested in doing that. So, well, I was going to say both, uh, that and, and you're not the first one to Katie to bring up SEO. We've had a handful of people asking us, uh, you know, how does that work and what should I be doing? So that sounds like that might be another class for us as well. Um, SEO okay. is one of those, yeah, SEO is one of those things too, that is very beneficial, but it's passively beneficial. Um, once you nail your SEO, it doesn't mean you get a flood of people coming to your website. It just helps people find it easier. So it's one of those things you really need to find how you want to advertise. Is it your business, or your webpage, and then figure out how to target that with a, a well-placed ad. And frankly, um, Facebook's cost is far superior than Google ads is right now. Google ads has gone up about I think they said 48% for the cost of ads in the last month. Wow. So for every, you know, dollar you spend on Facebook, you're going to be spending significantly more on Google. I and mean, their rates went up. It's about $5 per $1 on Facebook. Right now. So, right. 
So. Well, that's that's great information as well, guys. So I, I think we could, uh, like I said, find somebody that maybe can talk to us, uh, give us all a little bit. Um, you know, the chamber could even benefit from knowing more about that as well. So, right. So I'm sorry, Katie, I, I kind of interrupt. Did you have anything more to say? <laughs> oh, no, I'm good. I, uh, yeah, I think I'm good. Thanks so much. Great. Thank you. And we'll uh, reach out. And again, if we can help, uh, obviously, I know you and Lindsay talk and Lindsay have some, but again, that offer if, uh, with your, con you know, the mini concerts or whatever you're doing in the back or anything else, uh, let Lindsay know and we will do our best to push it out on our social media and our, um, just to let you guys know, uh, you know, Lindsay is very active on making sure we grow our reach uh, exponentially each month. So we, uh, we monitor our growth on all our social media platforms, our email and our website views to make sure that um, we are reaching more and more people all the time. Um, and with the idea that as we grow that base, we're providing more for you guys as you want to promote your whatever it is. We'll use that base to promote your business. So um, that's why we spend a, a good amount of our time trying to grow our base to help you in the end. But, so I've probably stepped over all the things that Lindsay wanted to talk about, but Lindsay, you're the last on the list. Do you want to say anything? <laughs> Um, thank you guys for joining us today. Um, we really appreciate it. It's nice to hear new perspectives and see your faces. Um, my video doesn't work, so that's why you don't get to see my face. I'm just a silent entity now. Um, I just want to point out a couple things. We've been pretty active in our chat today. This is such a good resource for you to share, you know, your personal pages, your website, your information. Um, you know, to keep the networking going outside of these calls. So uh, please take a couple of moments just to look and see what's in the chat, maybe, you know, cut and paste into a document so that you have people's information. Um, we do have some uh, links in here that are things that people touched on. Uh, so I'd just like to point out a couple of those. That would be the grant information. So the small business um, work from home grants, you know, that stuff is all there and it's updated a lot. So maybe just uh, even save that address and you know frequently check back and see what the city has to offer you. And then um, unified development, that definitely is affecting people that live and work in this area. So check that out when you have a chance. And then Sonora talked about the neighborhood resources. This is a brand new program. Um, Madeline Hinkfuss was, um, brought into this position earlier this year and she's doing a dynamic job trying to unify our neighborhoods. Um, honestly, I look at it kind of as like taking it back to what it might have been, you know, when we were younger and, you know, you played on the cul-de-sac and everybody knew everybody and the neighbors were very, you know, friendly and open and had barbecues and things like that. So the neighborhood resource, there's a ton of stuff going on there. There's even like, they set up like a, a grant program where you could have a block party, like throw a little block party. They'll even like drop off happy hour, like uh, happy hour, um, you know, beverage cups and, and they have like a van. <laughs> so it's kind of, it's just so interesting. So if you are wanting to be more active and involved in your neighborhood, look at that information because I think it's, it's, it's just a great program. And Madeline is very open. If you have any questions whatsoever, you can email her directly. She will respond immediately because that's, that's all she cares about is just getting people together. So um, I think that's it for me. Um, happy Friday the 13th, people. Stay indoors, please, today. <laughs> um, hope you guys all have a great weekend. Don't get creamed by a transcontinental bus <laughs> stepping outside or something like that. <laughs>